Joining me now is Clive Neal, a professor of planetary geology in the College of Engineering at the University of Notre Dame. He is also the chair of NASA's Lunar Exploration Analysis Group. Dr. Neal, welcome to Notre Dame Day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us early this morning. I understand we're going to talk about the very beginning of your career, and I understand mm. that the Apollo Apollo missions, in some small way, inspired your path. Can you tell us a little bit about well, that? They, they inspired me because my father got me up in England early in the morning, and I didn't want to get up, but he made me get up by saying, son, this is history. You need to come watch it. And it was awe-inspiring to see people walking around on another planet. I mean, that was just unbelievable. And then, you know, 30, 40 years later, I am now, uh, I've been working on these uh, Apollo samples that they brought back to understand the origin and evolution of our nearest neighbor. So it's quite, uh, quite amazing to see how things work out. Well, we haven't had a manned mission to the moon since 1972, I believe. Mm -hmm. So has there been enough information gathered in the years since then to really form the foundation of some new technology? Well, let's, let's think about that. It's, it's 45 years since Apollo 17 was the last manned mission. And the political will has not been there because we think that it costs too much money. And if it costs too much money, we've got plenty of problems down here. But we haven't really invested in the space program since the Apollo missions. Um, we can't even get to space station at the moment because we have to pay the Russians. So it's a very political thing. But the other thing we have to look at is that the, the budget for NASA is an investment in our future. Because of the technology development that drives it, we wouldn't have our cell phones if it were in the way that they are if it wasn't for Apollo, because miniaturization became very important. Um, but also the fact now we have a lot of commercial entities that create jobs, and they're interested in going to the moon. They're interested in mining products on the moon. Uh, so they're, they're, there's a lot of interest there for the private sector that NASA can now stimulate in order to create these high high paying jobs to create these uh, new opportunities and bring the moon into our economic sphere of influence. So there's, there's opportunity here that allows us not only to use the moon to go to other places, but also to create jobs and, and, and a new sector uh, for the people we're training here at Notre Dame. You break it down to the invention of the cell phone, that really brings it home to a lot of people. Oh, I hope I hear people walk across <laughs> campus not looking at each other anymore. So uh, it's a, you can see it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And with another thing we hear about regularly in the news, or I should say occasionally in the news, is whether or not there's water on the moon. Ah, yes. Why is that important? Water is important. There is water on the moon. Um, we don't know what form. We don't know how much. But it's important for two things, because it's made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Um, we can use the solar energy to break down water to hydrogen and oxygen. We can breathe the oxygen so we have you know, the basis of forming a, a permanently based habitat up there for humans. Um, the hydrogen and oxygen can be combined into rocket fuel, so they could, that, that reaction allows us then to refuel spacecraft. Because when we launch off this planet, 90% of that mass of the rocket is fuel and it's dumb mass. It needs to get out of our gravity. So if you're going to go to Mars, be good to sort of orbit the moon first, refuel, go to Mars with a full, a full tank, and then you've got, uh, you can actually get back. That would, that's sort of important if we're going to send humans to Mars so in a sustainable way. It's so. important when you're trying to drive across the country too. It, makes, exactly it only right. makes sense when you're going that much farther. Well, when you had the Apollo missions to inspire your interest in mm. the space program, you're dealing with an entire generation now, oh, your yes. students who probably have limited to no memory of an active space program. Correct. What yeah. inspires them? What gets them excited about space travel? Well, this is, this is the thing I ask students when I, when, and when I give public lectures. I ask them, what is your Apollo moment? And what is it? There's nothing since Apollo that has been that inspiring. And so we get Google, we get cell phones, we get, and, and this to me is sort of in, in the weeds. So how do we create an Apollo moment for the, for the next generation or for this generation? And that is by getting back to the moon in a way that is sustainable. Apollo was great, but it showed us how not to do space travel. And that's to take everything with us. Use the resources that we now know are there on the moon. Use the moon as an enabling asset to go to Mars in a sustainable way, not just flags and footprints, then we're done, which was basically Apollo. So it, it got canceled. So and that's not the way to do space travel. In your estimation, do you think we have another trip coming up soon? I am cautiously <laughs> optimistic given the current administration's stance. 
Um, it depends on who's going to be the next administrator of NASA. I have my favorite, but um, we'll see what the president says about that. So right. it's, uh, it's going to be a fun time and a very inspiring time, I think, for the next generation. So uh, I'm hoping that more people get involved with it. Certainly very exciting. And once the camera's off, I'm going to see if I can get some insider information oh, okay. from you. All Dr. Right. Neal, yeah. thank you so All much right. for joining us. Thank you.